Alright, so don't misunderstand, I really did want to cover Ozzy in today's video, I said I was going to do him next, but my wife just got a buff, and she's on raid up, so like, I really don't know what to tell you guys, I mean, there's the old adage of bros before hoes, but I'm the complete opposite, right, we're taking the hoes before the bros, alright? But on that note, if you enjoy FGO content I upload every single day, leave a like on the video if you enjoy, subscribe to the channel to show your support, it really does help me out, and click that join button if you want to go that extra mile in showing your support for the channel but with that being said let's go ahead and talk about my wife all right lancer artoria all right so looking at her deck you've got two pretty solid quick cards three hits each with 12.2 percent crit star generation so i mean you can probably gen a few stars with their quick cards again i don't really see why you would prioritize using those but since they gave her a lancer deck you might have to use her quick cards on occasion so if you do have to use them you can gen a few stars i guess that's somewhat of a positive but then her arts card is quite insane 1.1 one percent NP gen two hits on the single arts card now you're probably not going to be genning a whole lot of NP if you're just using the arts card raw by itself but if you're using this with like stars and you're getting an arts crit you're going to gen a massive amount of NP I will say that once we start getting into her skills it really doesn't matter if you get the arts crits because you're probably going to be just fine with some of her skills but it is somewhat nice that she has this in the back pocket the ability to pretty much refund a metric ton of her NP back by getting an arts crit off and then she has the lovely five hits on the extra attack if you guys don't know extra attack is basically a composite card it gen stars it gens np it does big damage it's very very good for servants that need to brave chain like these damaging servants that you know your main dps you want them to have a good extra attack to really round out their deck five hits is usually just the gold standard you want to have at least five hits anything more is very very good anything less and it's kind of poo poo stinky but enough about her deck let's go ahead and talk about her skills now for you na players her first skill is a 50 percent buster performance buff for one turn on a five turn cooldown which is very very solid right mana burst skills you know them you love them they're pretty good however over on the jp version of the game they're giving her a 50% damage buff to Chaotic and a 50% damage buff against evil alignments for one turn. Now, this is really, really crazy. It's very similar to like Benny Enma's NP because there's quite a few servants that fall under Chaotic and there's a massive amount of servants that fall under evil. And I would wager to say, I haven't seen the calcs for it quite yet because this buff is so new, but I'd wager to say that with these buffs active, she is the most damaging aoe lancer right that we have because she's right behind her alter self and she's right behind karna right now but not only are these buffs multiplicative and so they're going to really skyrocket her damage she's getting a hundred percent extra damage if she can get both of these to proc which i think is absolutely insane and while i do think the skill is very very good i would have much rather seen a buff to maybe her np or maybe her charisma skill which just go ahead and getting into her second skill she has the charisma skill that's still at 18 percent usually the standard for charisma now is to have it be at least 20 percent and then give additional effects i would have much rather seen this get a buff maybe it just gives her like the entire party like 20 percent attack right for three turns and then it gives the entire party 30 percent crit damage for three turns maybe 50 percent crit damage for one turn just something along those lines to kind of more make her more uh well-rounded but the buff to the first skill is nice again we just kind of talked about the second skill it's literally just a basic charisma it's good because it's providing damage to the entire party it's multiplying her buffs together right because different buff types multiply into each other meaning it's better to do like 40% buster and 40% attack than just doing like 80% raw attack because those two buster and attack buffs will multiply into each other and make you hit really, really hard. So it's good for that. It's also providing just damage to everybody. I mean, that's also very good for free. Like there's no restrictions. It's just, it needs some more to make it a more standout skill, I suppose is what I'm getting at. But then we have her third skill, which is kind of why I said it doesn't really matter that her arts card I don't want to say is weak, but is very reliant on getting crits to gen a lot of NP because she has a 50% battery on a six turn cooldown. And then they also gave it buff removal for herself, which is pretty solid, right? It's very good if you're using her in like challenging content and you're getting like buff stacked by your opponent. Like they're just stacking the debuffs on, you can just yeet all of those off. 
My only problem with cleansing debuffs is that the ones that you really want to cleanse like charm, stun, or like the new put to sleep status that some of these servants have is that because your servant is like locked down because of those statuses, you can't actually use the debuff cleanse on it. So that might be why in like some of the videos you're like, well, I mean, he's saying that the debuff cleanse is good, but he's not like really praising it. And that, that's kind of why, because like, yeah, sure. They're like, you can get rid of buster down or like an attack down or a defense down, but the stuff I would really want to cleanse, I can't actually get rid of with the debuff cleanse, which is why I actually really liked Galatea's skill initially because i thought it was going to proc at the end of the turn and like kind of get rid of any of that but it procs after your turn so you can still get stunned so i, I don't know i'm not gonna say it's bad but i'm like not as high on the whole debuff cleanse thing you know but then we have our np which you might remember from the challenge quest i don't really know if it's a challenge quest in camelot but it was it was a pretty difficult fight when it first came out it's piercing invincibility and it activates first meaning unless you have a lot of defense or you have solemn defense you're not escaping this np right which is very good for us when we're using lancer artoria very bad when you're fighting her it does damage it doesn't really have a whole lot of hits it only has the two which means you can't even use this like Iskandar or Emiya or Raikou's NP or it's a Buster NP that drops a lot of stars you can't even use it like that because the hit count is so low but then she is refunding her NP gauge and again this is kind of why I'm saying doesn't really matter all that much that her arts card is very reliant on getting crits because at bare minimum overcharge one she's getting 20% NP back and at overcharge five she's getting 60% back which means she should have a pretty reliable way of getting her NP back, whether it be through her own NP, whether it be through her third skill. And then I'm assuming if you're packing like double Merlin or something with her, she'll have a decent amount of stars to play around with. You could probably get a crit on that arts card, refund most of your NP. Overall, she's very solid. It's just, I've been a huge proponent of say like Ereshkigal or Karna, because I think right now those two servants are more complete their packages are very more like well-defined. Whereas Lancer Artoria, she's kind of starting to grow into the niche they wanted to be into, which is not quite there yet. Like I think buff the NP, buff the charisma, and then we'll see Lancer Artoria be a very top tier AOE Lancer. But as of right now, I can't recommend summoning for her. You know, if you get her on like one of the class banners, like you happen to just throw like a multi there or you're doing like the GSSR and you happen to get her there, like she's not bad. She'll definitely be very good. Having a 50% battery gives a lot of utility. It's just, again, I think if you need a 50% battery, I'm going to more go for a Reshkigal, especially in more difficult content. But then if I need like an AOE Lancer that I want specifically for difficult content, I'm going to be bringing Karna because I think Karna is very more well suited to taking on difficult content. But I'd love to hear what you guys think in the comments down below i'll probably talk about ozzy you know all the other buffs tomorrow you know we got a lot to talk about over here on the ztl channel so leave a like and subscribe if that interests you but with that being said i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here you guys have yourselves a nice day peace late guys